Hola everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Amanda Jamie. Um, I am a licensed esthetician and a certified lash artist. I've been doing this for about the past three years and I have so much to share with you guys. So today we're gonna talk about three simple steps to market yourself. Um, they're super easy. I just thought, you know, why not start there? Start with marketing yourself and how to get clients in your door and oh, this is so much fun, I love this. So this is just how to market yourself in three simple steps, the last artist edition. So go ahead and keep on watching. All right, before we get started in the link down below, I do have a complete guide on how to start your lash business from the ground up, just the legalities and like the kind of boring stuff that you guys really need to know. Um, as far as getting your LLC and getting your license and all that fun stuff. So that is in the link down below. If you are interested in downloading your free F R E E guide on starting your own lash business. All right. So there are three steps um, to marketing yourself that I find are very important and the easiest to understand. You can Google like best marketing tips and strategies and stuff like that. But this way to me is the most clear, concise way on how to do it and how to make it make sense. So basically, you treat yourself like a package. You are the package deal, honey. You are giving people everything that they want. Um, they are looking at your package from the outside. Let's, I don't know, use my phone for example. I got this wonky case on so I'm gonna take it. But anyway, a cell phone is an item, it's a good. It's pretty when you get it. It's packaged all nice, got the little cellophane wrap on it. Take the little box out, you see the pretty gem inside and you're like, oh, it's mine. You tell all your friends, you're like, oh yeah. I just got the new iPhone, like it's so great. And then they're like, oh, I need it too. Just like that. So the way how easy that flowed is the way marketing flows for um, for business, uh, especially if you're an independent lash artist. It's hard. Um, it's hard to get people to trust you and it's hard to get people through your door and I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It takes a long time. So I just wanted to make an easy way that you guys can refer to on how to market yourself. So there are three steps and that is packaging yourself like a little good or item or whatever you call things that you buy at the store. You're gonna deliver the package, which is deliver your service. And then number three, it's gonna travel. So after you package it, you package it, you deliver it, it's gonna travel through word of mouth. And that's really how easy marketing your service is going to be. So let's start with step number one, which is packaging your item, which is yourself. So when you package, think of yourself as a brand, um, like a tangible item, like I said, the cell phone. When you go to the store, the things you buy are organized, easily accessible, easy to know exactly what they do for you, how they're gonna help you. You don't have to search for what this specific item is going to do for you. You kind of already just know when you're gonna go pick it up from the store. So same with how you want to package yourself and package your business. You want to be somebody that stands out from the rest of the crowd. So whether it's your crazy wispy sets or your spiky sets or you're great at mega volume or you are the perfect classic person where every single lash is super straight or you just give a great client experience they come into the door and you know you have a drink ready on hand whatever it may be that sets you different um or sets you apart from everybody else that's the thing that you want to sell because people are attracted to different things and not every client is your client nor is, are they a good client for you in your business so making um being clear about what you're gonna give and how you're gonna sell it really helps. Also being true to yourself is extremely important too. Um, don't try to be somebody you're not to try to gain clients. Um, I'll give you an example. If you are one that's into, I don't know, true crime. Let's say you like true crime or you like Halloween or you like, I don't know, something that's out of the ordinary from like frilly girly stuff. Stay true to that. I see so many artists that like are living their truth and they have people come in because they like that stuff too so don't down yourself trying to think like you're trying to fit into this box like everybody else whatever makes you different makes you great so when posting on social media you want to make sure that you're um selling yourself in a concise way that makes people makes it easy for people to understand exactly what your strengths are rather than trying to dig through your content to trying to figure out what 
you're providing. So I'm gonna start with the Instagram example. Let's take, for example, your Instagram. You're gonna go onto your Instagram, you're gonna look at your Instagram, and you're gonna analyze it. When people visit your page, can they tell who you are, what you service, where you're located, and what you're good at? Do they know? Because those are the main important things. When I see somebody, I'm like, who's this person? So I'll give you an example. When you go to somebody's page and somebody's doing lashes and they don't even have their name or a picture of themselves or anything on their thing, I am literally digging. Their, their lashes can be bomb, but I am digging Instagram to figure out who this person is. I shouldn't have to do that much work to figure out who's going to touch my face. But that's just a personal opinion. But that's how I feel. Things should be clear and concise and all ready to go when you get onto the Instagram. So let's start with your profile picture. Your profile picture can be a multitude of things, but the main things is either a picture of your business logo, which I can do a whole nother video on how to do your business logo and how to make it look professional, doing it yourself for free, or, but that's a later video, or it can be a picture of yourself, preferably professionally done, no like filters or, anything like that like literally just a picture of you or maybe a picture of you and a little logo of your business whatever it should represent how you want your brand to be seen um if you want to be the face of your brand fine if not a logo is great too i have a logo on my thing for about three years it's fine so now let's make our way down to the bio the bio has two major components it's your name and your bio so for lash artists just starting out i really 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 encourage having your name not be your name, so you don't want it to be like Amanda on there. I would have the city on where you're doing lashes and then um, lash extensions. So whatever is in that name part of your bio is, um, what do you call it? Searchable, searchable on Instagram. So if you put Amanda, I mean, not Amanda, Tampa lash extensions, or I'm moving to Portland soon, so Portland lash extensions. It makes anybody in Portland or Tampa just type in the little search bar, Tampa Lash Extensions, and you'll be one of the ones that pop up. That's another thing that makes you different from everybody else. I mean, the cool names are cool and your business name is, I'm sure, beautiful and perfect. But on the name of your bio, your business name could be your tag handle or your um, Instagram handle. But the name of your bio should be the city that you're located in and the service that you provide. So it could be Tampa Volume Lash Extensions or Portland lash extensions or portland lashes or whatever you could have your own mix of things and put your little own twist on it but i think it's important to have the city and the service that you provide in the name so that's one little tip the next is the bio the bio has 150 characters on there and i suggest to use them all just because it gives a lot of information about you and your business in that bio and it gives you a chance it's the first thing people see when they go on your page so I would just go crazy. The major things that I will put in there is is what you're good at. So whatever lash extension that you're good at or any service that you're really good at, put that there. I specialize or we specialize in blah, 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 blah. Um, located in blah, 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 blah. This is how you book right here. Make sure that you have your website in your bio. Um, I mean, Square sites are cool for booking and stuff, but even if you can just invest a little bit more in a website to make yourself look a little bit more professional, that's great too, but Square or Acuity or all those websites work too. Just make sure it's clear and concise on how your clients can book because that is extremely important. Nobody wants to go on your page and then see these, see all these beautiful lashes and be like, so how do I book? Like, <laughs> how do I even talk to you? Don't make it confusing. The easier, the better, because the more people have to do, the more they're just gonna leave your page and go to somebody else who makes it easier. So literally lay it out for them. All right, so I told you everything that you should have in your bio, but there are a couple of things that I wanna tell you that you should not have in your bio. These are things like DM to book. Why, when there's free website bookings and stuff like that, I don't think anybody should have to DM you and you have an entire conversation going back and forth about what time and where when it just gives them the opportunity to just tell you no so if you have everything clear and concise on the website you don't even have to spend the time arguing with them about what time they can come and they could just go on the website and book so i would take out dm to book i would make it easier for them by having some kind of source of booking number two i don't know why for some reason lash artists hair people like they want to put these big red 
symbols in their bio like x's and the o with a little slash through it um that's not inviting <laughs> like that looks kind of mean to me when i go on your page and you're like don't do this don't do that Man, i don't like this i don't like that Man. like well then i don't like you and i'm gonna go to somebody else <laughs> like that's just how i feel so to me that's not very professional looking when they're like no kids no this like why are you so angry in your bio like you could put these on a little policy nice and packaged remember we talked about earlier packaging um you could just put that somewhere else there's no reason to be so aggressive in your bio about these negative things another thing that you can avoid is how many times you're certified because quite honestly nobody really cares whether you're certified once or certified 32 times they just care about you and your work um nobody really asks for qualifications certifications who you got certified through a very few the only people I can really think of are like noble ash people who care but other than that don't put that in your bio you're taking up space where you can put other valuable information and as many times as you're certified just doesn't matter what matters is how well you perform which kind of ties into number two which is the deliver step so step two to marketing yourself is deliver 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 so once you got that person you had your your um your brand all packaged up and pretty and people are like heck yeah i'm gonna buy from her she does some bomb lashes and i like her work and i like her personality i'm gonna book with her as soon as they walk through your door right there you have to deliver like there's no i'm tired i want to hurry up and finish this set i'm ready to go home like customer service comes first you want to give your client the experience that they came here for and you want them raving about it. You want them to be like, these are the best lashes I ever had. You know, every time somebody sits in my chair, I have to tell myself, because we're human. You know, we're human. We get tired. Sometimes you're taking a 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock client. You're like, oh, I've been here since 9 a.m. I just want to go home. You have to, me personally, I sit back and I'm like, if I was getting the service, I don't care what time it is. You told me yes. So I have to bring myself back and be like okay I'm gonna deliver the best lashes I've ever done in my life before I start and I do that with almost every client I'm like these are gonna be the best lashes and for the most part when you start off with that positive attitude they are they are some bomb lashes so it's a little thing to trick yourself because we do get burned out we are sitting here for hours at end and sometimes you just don't feel like it and that's okay but the client came here for a service, so it's up to you to deliver, deliver, deliver. I find a problem with like how you do your service has to do a lot with like imposter syndrome. So a lot of these sets that we see on the internet are like literally perfect. We see these lash artists that's been doing it for a long time, or sometimes the sets that we see take seven, eight hours because they're perfecting it for a photo shoot or whatever the case may be. Don't let imposter syndrome get to you. You have practiced long enough, I'm sure. And if not, you will have practiced long enough, I'm sure. And you can deliver a quality service. Whether your lashes are just beginning and they're nice and light or they're super full and wispy or whatever, somebody's going to like them for the work that you deliver. They came to you because they saw what you can deliver. And they're like, heck yeah, that's what I want. So put your best foot forward every time somebody sits in your chair and I promise those people are going to return to you. And even if they come to you from the very beginning, they're going to see your progression and how your work has gotten better and appreciate you even more for it. So don't let those first few clients or first few bad apples discourage you from continuing to deliver your best work every single time somebody lays in your chair. And quite honestly, lashing is an art. I don't do it like you do it, like they do it. We all have different skill sets and we all see things a little bit differently. So with the amount of products that's available, products, um, lashes, glues, the way they feel, the way they look, the colors, this and that, the styling, people's eye shapes, everything is so different that and every set comes out differently. So it doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. Just I want you to deliver your best work because I promise it's like the, the most exciting part when you're able to do some of these lashes, like, damn, that's like some fire lashes and you take pictures of them. You're so excited. That's what makes me happy about the job. And that has brought us to lastly, numero three, which is the travel part of your package that you've worked so hard on. So basically when you deliver that package to that person, that package travels because they're gonna be on people's eyes. People are gonna rave about them. They're gonna love them. Word of mouth is like crazy. Let me tell you how I got most of my clients. And I'm not even gonna lie to you. It wasn't my social media, although it did give me some. 
doing ads and all that stuff and people will preach ads Instagram ads Facebook ads whatever 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 my favorite clients in the world are in the service industry because they know they know what a service street bait what a service based job is so I had one girl literally closest to my heart she works at a restaurant a chain restaurant and when I tell you, she referred, she worked at three restaurants. Every restaurant she went to, I had clients coming out of my ears and she was like, I can't even get into you anymore. And I'm like, girl, it's your fault because she spoke so highly of me. So when you leave an impression on somebody that really means something, they talk about you. And it's just a matter of time before it's like a ripple effect or the domino effect where you just, it's success. It, it's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah, so anyways, that like hypes me up. I don't know why, but word of mouth will come. Just be patient. Um, you can also have little incentives too, like little cards to offer, I don't know, 20, 15, 10, whatever you choose. The less the better in my opinion, but if you offer like 10% off your service, um, if they refer to their friends or whatever, that's a way to incentivize them to tell their friends about it. But honestly, if you just deliver good work, they're going to tell their friends anyways. There's no need to, to do that. But in the beginning, it's good. So don't not do it, but you don't have to do it forever, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Just keep on being the best lash artist you can possibly be. And I promise those referrals will come. And yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. So if this was helpful, please give me a like. If you have anything else to add, go ahead and drop that down in the comments box. Like I said, if you have any other questions, you can always drop it down in the comments. I try to get to most of them. Or if you really need me to answer, go ahead and head over to my Instagram. It's um, at Project Lash Tech. Go ahead and send me all your questions and I'll be sure to get to you there. Again, down below is my little link to sign up for my um, Lash Startup Guide. So you can see that there. And yeah, that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you have a great rest of your week or weekend whenever you guys are watching this and I will see you next time.